Recently, I got to play a Grandmaster for the first time. This was an over-the-board blitz game in the 3-2 time control. So I was playing against Sabino Brunello, he's one of the top Grandmasters in Italy, I believe he's ninth in Italy, and he just opens with d4, I have the black pieces, so I play knight f6, just controlling that e4 square, making sure white can take the full center, and knight f3. This is a move I don't actually know, I don't have any theory here, so the only thing I'm trying to do here is try and transpose into something I do know to hopefully Get a decent position so i just go d5 and sabino just goes for c4 this is the queen's gambit i just support my pawn with e6 and here i'm trying to transpose into back to what i know and hopefully get some sort of nimzo indian which i play a nimzo it's when white gets the knight out and you put the bishop out but here that happens but because this knight is on f3 and is actually known as different opening this is the wood goes in defense and obviously this bishop is going to be a little bit bad so then we're going to have to fear in ketterer to try and break in the center to get that bad boy into the game but the thing is I actually have no concrete theoretical knowledge here, although I do know some of the ideas from Nimzo Indians, so we do see how to get my lines a little bit muddled up. So we see bishop g5 by Sabino, but this isn't just monkey see monkey do, I'm playing a grandmaster. So I go c5, it's a tiny inaccuracy, but it seemed to have taken my opponent out of theory, he didn't actually know this move. Maybe he'd seen it before, but he didn't blitz out any move, he'd thought for a little while to try and figure out the best approach here, because obviously it's not the best move, but I am quickly putting some pressure on white center, but my bishop is a little bit in jail, you know, it's very hard to retreat this bishop. I'm not going to go back to a4, because if it's something like a3, hit my bishop, I drop it back, and then b4, it's not going to be very happy. This bishop's going to be terrible, it's never really going to get into the game. He decides to take my pawn immediately, and I just get my knight out. So I gambit the pawn for a bit of development. Sorry, I got the bar back up now, I don't know why the bar wasn't on, the bar is now on. You can see the evaluation, very equal so far, even though I am down one pawn, but this is no issue. This pawn, I can take it back immediately, but just wanted to get my knight into the game. So he goes e3, and I had a very solid choice here. I had a very solid choice. In the, what I could have done here is I could have just snap taken this knight. He takes back with the pawn, the only, the only piece defending that bishop. And I just quickly go for move, like queen, queen to a5. Of course, white can take and then double my pawns. But with this double threat on these two pawns, I'm quickly getting some counterplay and cashing in on my investment. But instead, I went for something a little bit different. I decided to just go queen a5 right away before taking. And this allows my opponent to double my pawns. Isn't it as bad as it looks? It looks kind of horrendous. I mean, if I went to castle here, the, the G4, the G file is wide open. Could be a bit of a double-edged sword. Maybe I can use G file to my advantage. You're just going to have to see. So C takes D5. He takes in the center. But the thing is, because this knight is still pinned, my center is still quite solid. And again, this pawn could be won back at any moment. It's not really an issue. So knight D2. He rotates back. And this is a bit of an inaccuracy by my opponent. This does lose a pawn. So of course, takes, takes, takes with the queen. And of course, natural move here hits the queen with the rook, and I decide to slide the queen back to the most juicy square I think I could find, e5. But the problem with this move is it just quickly allows my queen to be hit. Of course, it is a blitz game, so I'm not, didn't think for 10 minutes here, I probably blitz this move out in about 5 seconds if I believe. So he just moves the knight attacking my queen, I drop it back. And at this point in time, I'm actually up on the clock. I think I was up about 30 seconds, and the position is still relatively equal, so a lot to play for here, and I'm not doing too badly, but obviously this position is a little bit unsightly, but that's basically it. And if he just takes this pawn, yeah, as I thought, just bishop e6, queen d3, and then rook d8. I get a lot of compensation for that pawn. I get two pieces into the game for the cost of a pawn. And with all these open files for my rooks, white could be in a little bit of trouble with the correct play. So instead, after bishop b5 pinning my knight, I just go for bishop e6, which in hindsight, I don't know why I played this. I guess I'm defending my pawn, to be fair, but this is a very natural continuation after white, if white decides to grab that pawn. I think I should have just gone bishop d7, or maybe a bit further to bishop g4. Which is a bit more of an active square because my bishop right now isn't really looking at much. I mean, this pawn doesn't have to be defended. So knight d4, Sabino's pieces have quickly sprung it into the game. And now I'm under quite a lot of pressure. So rook c8, just defending my knight because obviously there's a lot of pressure on that square right now. He just castles and I decide to bring a rook onto the open file. Rook g8, maybe begin some sort of attack onto his king side. So king h1 gets off that open file because my rook is actually quite scary. And this pin pawn could be exploited with a move like... Bishop h3, so he just moves his king, so that's never an issue. And I quickly go h5, try and start some sort of attack, but this move just, just hangs a pawn in one move. This queen can simply capture that pawn. Yes, it is the best move. He didn't miss anything here. He should have just taken on h5. But instead, he decides to go queen a4 and put some more pressure on my knight, which sort of squanders his advantage. It actually halves his advantage. So it's clearly not the best move. And now I can actually use this pawn to attack and start some sort of counter attack. So queen c7, defending my knight a little bit more. Again, quite a passive move, but I guess there's some slight pressure on this king side, but I'm not sure how that's ever going to manifest. I mean, my position is just cramped. I'm kind of getting squeezed here. If I don't find some way to get counter play quick, I am just going to lose this game. So rook b1 by Sabino decides to 
put some more pressure on my B pawn, but I don't have much counterplay here. So my options are quite limited. So h4, I try and attack a little bit more. And so Bino makes another slight inaccuracy, he decides to capture with the knight. I capture with the pawn. And because this pawn is sufficiently defended, the bishop just has to move. And he slides over to a6, hitting my rook, and I just moved my rook, which loses my advantage. Here, the position is actually extremely equal, and the only move to sort of keep the game interesting is pawn to h3, using this very strong rook to get some counter play. Of course, if you just grab that rook, you're getting smoked. The pawn takes, pawn takes g2, hits the king, hits the rook, and after the king slides over, you actually grab that pawn, and you can make a queen, which is quite funny. White will have to take with the king, so king takes, and then bishop takes c8, and then you're just up three points of material, and you're still attacking. I mean, the queen can come into the game, the other rook can come into the game. It's very nasty for white, so that would have been a tasty rook sacrifice if I was to see that. And if you're wondering what the best continuation is here for white, white can just keep some sort of advantage with g3, and with this wasted tempo, you go rook b8, and after something like captures, captures, there just isn't that much play left in the position. I mean, this structure is quite solid. You can try and get some kind of play, but this bishop was quite passive, but never actually works in my advantage. It's quite a good defender. There's uh, not too much play for here. Quite like that could be a draw. Probably not me playing against the grand master would be drawn, but if two GMs had this position, it might end up in a draw. So yeah, my rook was attacked. I did not find that amazing tactical sequence. I unfortunately just slid it over to d8, which was one of the, it was actually the slightly worst square for the rook to go, because looking at this pawn for not really any reason, because this square is defended very well. It's not going to give me advance in this pawn and getting this rook really into the game. So Bino just takes my pawn, and now I basically have nothing. I mean, I've got nothing left in this position. And I decide to try and get my rooks in the game and defend this pawn. I play king e7, which allows a brutal move, but which my opponent immediately found rook to b7 which pins my queen to my king. There's nothing I can do. I will have to give up my queen for the rook. And with all these pawns, my king's position being so open, I decided to resign the game here, unfortunately. Quite an interesting game. Definitely a few moments where I could have taken the advantage. Uh, a little bit to learn from. Maybe need to touch up on my sort of D4 theory. And if you thought that was quite good, I have lot more, lots more game breakdowns on my channel. So more to take a look at. Actually, my game with the white pieces against uh, Sabino is on my channel as well. But that, that actual recording of me playing the game, so that's quite interesting. You want to take a look at that. And I'm also trying to hit 1,000 subscribers by the end of July. I'm currently at around 700. So if you guys could subscribe, that'd help me out quite a lot. Because obviously, get 1,000 subscribers, it's quite a big milestone for a small channel like mine. So thank you guys, and hopefully, I'll see you in the next one.